After I recently uploaded a video about my kayak fishing rods and reels and why and when I use them, I had a request asking, can I go through more of the fishing gear that I use and to include clothing? Now it would be probably difficult for me to go through all the fishing gear I used if I used all if I included all the accessories and and all the lures it would probably be something like a four hour long video if uh, if I included all that but what I decided to do was to expand on that video that I did and go through and include shore fishing so go through all the different shore fishing rods and reels that I use, including going, th going through the kayak fishing rods and reels, and also all of the clothing that I use, both for shore fishing and for kayak fishing. So these are the rods that I've built up. Now, this, is, this hasn't happened overnight. These are, this has been built up over many, many years of, of fishing, and some of the uh, rods that we're gonna look at are actually definitely over 20 years and I think I've got one that is over 30 years old. Now the other thing I wanted to say is that because I do so many different types of fishing and I, and I need different rods for different types of fishing, a lot of these rods are really budget rods. Needing so many different rods I can't go, go and buy expensive rods all the time. If I just did one type of fishing, let's just say I just did a shore bass fishing with lures, then yes, maybe I could invest in a, a better, uh, more expensive, better quality rod. But the way I look at it is as many rods as I can get for, for the least money. And as long as, to me, they feel okay, as long as if it's a casting rod, they get that lure out and the action is good and it feels good, what more do you want? So as I say, a lot of them we look at are actually quite cheap. Some are a bit more expensive and the reels, I like to go for not expensive reels, but reasonable, reasonable quality reels that have got a good, rep, good reputation. So what I'm gonna do, start with the rods and I'm gonna start with the lightest rod, moving up to the heaviest rod. And what I mean by that is, is the, the lightest fishing that I do uh, with the light, light lures and, and maybe uh, light weights. Okay, the first rod we're gonna look at is this one. This is the lightest rod that I've got. And it's an eight foot, two to 10 gram, and it's a uh, Savage Gear. By the way, I am gonna mention the brands but I've got nothing to do with any of these, these uh, manufacturers or sellers. But I'll mention the brands because I know a lot of you may be interested and I'll try and put a list of all of these in the description. Although I, ha I will have to say that because some of my gear is so old, you, you're, not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to get them because they don't make them any, anymore. So anyway, this is a Savage Gear and it's actually called a Light Range Fishing. So basically it's what they call these days an LRF rod. We didn't call it LRF fishing years ago. It was just very light tackle fishing. Two to 10 grams. Beautiful rod. And what I use this for is very light tackle fishing. What they call light um, LRF fishing, light rock fishing with light lures. Um, but what I also use this for is mullet fishing. Even the, it's quite useful if you go mullet fishing to actually have a shorter rod. So for example, if you're fishing off of a pier or off a harbour wall, you're not really casting the float, if you're float fishing, casting out very far, you're dropping it down. These rods are actually light rod for mullet, a short rod for mullet fishing is actually sometimes easier to manage than a longer rod, which we're gonna look at, look at in a moment. So the reel that I use on this rod is just a little Shimano Air, Airnos, I think they call it, 3000 beautiful little reel that I've had for years. Again, like all these things, they tend to stop making this particular make, brand, but no doubt they've, they've replaced it with, with, with something else and probably virtually the same, same reel. So on that, it's very light line, I'll either have six pound braid and then use maybe a six pound fluorocarbon or, or nylon leader, or I've got a spare spool with this and I've got six pound fluorocarbon all the way through. So that's the fir first rod, what they call light rock fishing or mullet fishing 
when you when a shorter rod is useful. Next, I've got this is a 11 foot Daiwa match rod. It's called a D match 11W. And this is what I use for mullet fishing. And I use it with that little 3000 Shimano reel. Again, a beautiful rod. Now, this rod actually cost me, I'm pretty sure it cost me under 40 pound under 40 pound off Amazon and absolutely beautiful rod and of course it's got that lovely lovely bit of uh, that lovely light tip that you need for mullet fishing so that's what I use when I want to maybe float fishing I want to cast a cast a float out mullet fishing the savage gear one again I'm pretty sure that wasn't expensive I think I'm pretty sure I'm not absolutely sure but I'm pretty sure that was that was under 70 pound so a very cheap rod but a brilliant brilliant quality and a not so cheap one but still well under well under 100 pound so that's mullet fishing now many of you that follow the channel will know, will know a couple of years ago now I took up saltwater fly fishing for the first time and this is the rod and reel that I brought, not wanting to spend a lot of money on expensive fly rods and reels. So what I did was brought the airflow kit, which they do different types. This is the air, the airflow, uh, they call it uh, predator and salt water. It's got on here, it's nine foot, it's an eight stroke nine weight. And it came with the reel, okay reel, eight stroke nine weight came with the floating line, matching line. And so far, because uh, I'm going to do more this year when we can get back, back fishing, hopefully we get back fishing in time to do more saltwater fly fishing because I'm enjoying it. But you know, I don't think I'm going to bother going and buying an, an expensive fly rod. I'm, I'm happy with this. You know, if I'm fly fish, fishing for bass, I don't need to be able to cast fly. It, get, it gets me to where, to where I want. It feels good. It's nice and light. And to me, what more do I want? But the, with the reel, I spoke about this in a fly fishing video I did last year. With the reel, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to buy expensive reel, but I'm going to either buy more good value reels. So for the different line, or I'm going to buy one of those cassette reels because I have got different, different lines. But this kit, I paid I think it was $59.99 for the rod and the reel, pair of, sun, pair of glasses, sunglasses, a few, a few flies, a bag, and again, budget. Taking up saltwater fly fishing on a budget, and so far, as far as I'm concerned, it's been absolutely fine. So that's the, the fly rod and reel. Right, next we're on to lure fishing, spinning either spinning lure fishing from the shore, things like bass, pollock, mackerel, or from the kayak, same thing, bass, pollock, mackerel, from the kayak when I want to cast the lure out. So this is dual purpose, shore fishing and kayak fishing. So this is uh, an eight foot, it is, just a minute, it is, 15 to 40 grams, eight foot, and it's a Akuma Altera, Altera. Cost me, this one was under 50 pound. I think it was 49.99. So again, a budget reel. Now, before I had got this one, which I think was last year, I had another Akuma one. It was called a Hex, Hexana Spin. Again, eight foot. 10 to 36 grams, something like that. I had that for several years and it was brilliant. Now, unfortunately, as happens, I'm sure it's happened to all of you, I broke it. it wasn't the rod's fault, it was my fault. Did the no-no thing we should all know better, came in from a fit from a fishing trip, loading, loading up the van, put it at the back of the van with the doors open, wedged like that, and of course what happened, 
gust of wind, closed one of the van doors and boom, broke the tip. So I've, if it wasn't for that, I'd still have that one. So yeah, eight foot, 15 to 40 gram, Shimano Altera budget rod. Now on that, another Shimano reel. This is another Airnos that I ha I've had for years. This is the 4,000 size. And again, I've got two spools, but usually, usually I use braid and it's usually ranges between 15 and 20 pound and then, and then a, a leader. So a lot of shore fishing, you'll see me use this lure fishing and you'll see me cast using it as a casting rod from the kayak. What we're going to do now, I've got some three more lure rods, spinning rods. All the same brand. Now, what this is, this is a nine foot rod, so it's slightly longer. It's a Abu Vigilante, cheap as chips. 30 odd quid, I think they, I think they are. Um, this one is a 15 to 40. I've also got the 20 to 60 and I've got the heavy one, which is 10 foot, which is 40 to 80. So I use these with that 4,000 size reel. But what I use it for is sometimes uh, lures, but quite a lot float fishing. So for example, if I'm float fishing for mackerel or bubble float fishing for bass, which I've done a few videos about, done one last year, and that was using this rod. Bubble float fishing for bass or bombarder float fishing that's what I use this one for. And the reason that I go for the longer rod is because when you're float fishing, you're using, of course, you've got a, a trace, particularly if I'm bubble float fishing or bombarder float fishing, I might have a, a trace of, let's say, up, up to five foot. So I need that, that longer rod to, to be able to manage that. But again, for 30 odd quid, what's wrong with it? It's, it's beautiful, beautiful and light, and definitely worth the money. Now with the heavier ones of this, this particular Vigilante, what I use these for, it is, tends to be lure fishing, sometimes float fishing, if I'm needing to use a heavier weight, let's say for a, if I'm using a, um, a pencil float, a cigar float, and I need a heavier weight. The times when I need heavier lures. So for example, surf fishing, if you're fishing in the surf and you're, you're me using metal lures, let, let's say that anything from um, uh, 30 grams, let's say up to maybe 60, 60 grams to, to, cope, to cope with the surf. So it's handy to have a slightly heavier uh, lure rod that will cope with, with heavy, heavier lures. And as I said, the, the 40 to 80 I don't get to use this this much because I don't normally need that heavy, heavier lures, but sometimes there is an occasion when I've got, I've got to go heavy and handy to have a, a rod for it and a cheap, one as, a cheap one as well. So you've got three rods there, three rods, perfectly fine for under a hundred pound. Okay, we're going on to the kayak fishing now. Now I know I've done this before so I'll quickly go through those. For those of you that want to see how I use these in detail I, I'll put that video up in the, in the top right hand corner of the screen. So quickly go through them. Light vertical jigging. This is a, I think this one, this one's an Abu. Yeah it's an Abu. This is what they call a Silver Max combo and it is I should know this really, but sometimes I forget. 15, six foot six, so nice and short for the kayak. 15 to 40, 45 grams. This is the Silver Max combo. I've got one there, it's the Black Max combo, which I think is slightly cheaper. But again, budget. Rod, lovely little bait casting reel. And I pretty, again, I'm pretty sure, you'd have to check it if these are still available. I'm pretty sure this was maybe under 60 pound, it could, we're definitely under 70 pound for the two. Again, on there, usually 15, usually 15 pound braid, I'll use that. So light, 
vertical jig in off the kayak. Don't use these from the shore. So two of these, two of those, but I've also got a, another two bait casting reels. Again, with this is an Abu Silver Max. This wasn't a combo, but this here is a Berkeley. This is an eight foot. Again, it's 15 to 45 grams. It's an eight foot Berkeley Lightning. Well, 30 odd quid. I've had it absolutely, in fact, I've had this when I first started kayak fishing. So that's quite, quite a lot of years. 30 odd quid, nothing wrong with it. Fan, fantastic rod. You, you, if you watch my videos, you would have seen, seen this, particularly the older ones, see me using this a lot. But just, sl just slightly, slightly longer bait casting rod, bait casting reel for vertical, light vertical work. Going on to, still on kayak fishing, briefly go through these because I've already covered it. Light, a boat rod, seven foot six, 12 to 20 pound rating for bait fishing. Bait fishing off the bottom, bottom usually at anchor, sometimes on the drift, drift, drifting baits, dragging baits along the bottom. Could be after all sorts of things, um, cod, whiting, um, bull hus, rays, place, if I'm drifting, place fishing, turbot, whatever, whatever. And on that, fantastic reel, years I've had it. The Abu 6500C, fantastic reels, probably, probably one of the best range of multipliers ever made. Now this one is one ambassador. This one is one that was made in Sweden I'm not, I don't know, some of them are made in Sweden now, some are not, unfortunately. Um, but this one was. I've had it years. Now, if you notice there, black side plate, red side plate. <laughs> the reason for that is, I've had more of these over the years. Now, this one, the main side plate with all the mechanics in it, played up, but I had a spare that had a decent, I kept spares for ones that have packed up and I had a spare side plate. So I popped it on to keep it going or keep it going a few few more years and still working abs absolutely fine. Fantastic reels these were. I know you can still get them, but these are not cheap. These are over, over, over a hundred pound, but um, but they are worth it, particularly the ones that are still made, made in, in Sweden. So 12 to 20 pound boat rod, seven foot six, six and a half thousand C, bait work off the kayak. And I've got two, two of those. Oh, sorry, I forgot. The make of this rod, you can't get, you can't, you can't get them anymore, but no doubt they, they do similar. It, it was, it's called a Sonic SK4. And it's got these type of rings and it's got a very, very soft tip. And when they sold this, they said it was suitable for braid, that soft tip to give that more give because the braid has got, has got, has got uh, no stretch. So, but say you can't, this one is quite old. You can't get, can't get them anymore. The other, boat rod, a light boat rod I've got for bait fishing is, for those interested, is a Shimano, Shimano, Shimano something or other, Vengeance, seven foot six, 12 to 20 pound, gain six and a half thousand C reel. Not expensive at all. I think both of those rods were, well, this one I think was definitely under 50 quid. And I think the other one was probably under, under 60 quid. Right, now moving on to the heavier stuff. This one I've had for years. It's what they call a bass rod, which is basically just a light beach, beach, beach rod. It is a Gray's GRXS bass, 12 foot, two to four ounces. Beautiful rod, again light, because many times when I go bass fishing, I like to hold the rod. Light, I, I've, oh, I think I've had this over 20 years. 
can't rem I can't remember what this one cost. Being greys, it may have cost over a hundred pound. I, I just can't. I just can't remember. So what this is used for is exactly that. On the beach, surf fishing. Leads up to four ounce in the surf. Standing there in the surf. Team doubled up with the six and a half thousand C Abu Ambassador reel in the surf. Standing in in the surf. Holding it, you can hold it, hold it like that all day, all day long. Just feeling for the time when fingers crossed that bass bass takes that. So surf fishing, bait fishing off the rocks, light bait fishing off the rocks. Again, mainly after bass, but could be other other things. Um, what else do I use this for? Oh, um, gilt head bream fishing from the shore. Uh, great, great for that. But when I use it for gilt head bream fishing. I use, sometimes use, or often use, use it with one of these, uh, the bait runner. This is a, again a Shimano Oceanic 8000 bait runner reel, because bait runners are useful for, for gilt head bream fishing. So yeah, so gilt head bream fishing from the shore, or could be just est estuary fishing light estuary fishing for things like uh, flounders. So bass rod, 12 foot, two to four ounce. Most times when I go bait fishing for bass, particularly if it's on a surf beach, I don't like using a tripod on a surf beach. I look because you have to be so mobile. The surf beaches in Cornwall are usually shallow and you're always on the move, either chasing the tide down or you're, you're back, backing up, backing up. So it's easier for me to hold a rod and fish one rod. But sometimes if I'm on the rocks, bass fishing or for other things, and I'm in a stationary position, then, and then yeah, maybe I'll fish two bass rods. Now this one, well over 30 years old, still absolutely fine. Done a few repairs, eyes and things, but fine. This is, it's a Daiwa Whisker Carbon, Paul Kerry TDPK 115 bass rod, uh, one to four ounce, 11 foot six. And again, lovely rod, lovely light rod, uh, just to stand there in the surf and hold. Can't remember the price of this, probably because it's um, uh, got a name on it of a, of a famous person in the fishing, fishing world, it probably was. Maybe wrong, it might have been under £100, but this one might have been over £100. But as I say, over 30 years, and I still sometimes old, and I still sometimes use it. Okay, moving on to the last rod, the heaviest one that I use. And this is just a beach caster. It's a 12 foot beach caster, and it is, I think it's a Daiwa. Yeah, Daiwa, oh, Mean Streak, Mean Streak. It's 12 foot, casting weight, four to eight ounces. Oh, it is, it is Daiwa. This, I remember, and again, this is well over 20 years old. Could be getting to 30 years old. And again, I, I remember this one. This was not expensive at all. Definitely under 70 pound, could have been, could have been less. So it's just a beach caster. I don't do a lot of heavy beach casting. Occasionally I do when you need heavier weights. Sometimes I do um, when I need maybe to cast six ounce grip leads or, or more to hold the tide. Occasionally I do or off the rocks. So, I, so yeah, I do use this, but not as often as the bass rod. Again, cheap rod, old and and still still in still absolutely fine and still in use interestingly for those of you that are do a lot of beach casting beach fishing this is 12 foot now i haven't bothered showing it but i have got in the shed there i went and bought one of these really long rods the the, the, the europeans use one of the it was 16 foot only a cheap one to try it out 16 foot because it was they were using it down in the med and they became quite popular supposed to be uh, you know, be able to get a great distance. 
easily. I don't use it. I just could not get on with them. I just, it's, just that, it's just that length. And in actual fact, I found this, a 12-foot rod, just a normal rod, with that Abu. That's what I combine it with, again. The Abu 6,500C. Combined with those, I found I can cast just as far, far with a 12-foot beach caster than I could with one of those 16-foot rods that I just to me were just 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 uncomfortable but that's just a personal thing so for me beach caster 13 foot to me to me is, is long enough but you know you those of you that do a lot of beach casting may may think different okay so that's all the rods as you heard there a lot of them a lot of them are bud budget rods uh, a lot of rods for as least least cover all situations for the least amount as money as possible but what we do now we move on to the clothing okay these are your lightweight breathable waders and these things are great when you've got to move a lot. Maybe you, from where you're, you park your car, you've got to walk a lot to the mark. Um, when you're at the mark, you may be doing quite a bit of moving, maybe along the rocks, usually bass fishing, but other types of fishing. Maybe just a little bit of wading when you're standing in a little bit, uh, in fairly calm water. In other words, not a surf. Um, and yeah, they're just great. Now, these type of lightweight waders I've had so many I've tried expensive and I've tried cheap and I may be unlucky but the, I found the expensive ones are lasting no longer than the cheaper ones so I don't bother with expensive now these ones I can't remember the name off Amazon Kyle I'll put it in the description Kyle Booker or something off Amazon and, and, and they're fine, they're comfortable. So far, admittedly, I haven't had them more than a year, we'll find out. So far they're okay, but what I find is these things, if you wade it, in the end, they end, they end, they end up leaking. So I don't bother paying out hundreds. You can pay hundreds for these and still have problems. So to me, I think these were 60 something pound. I'm not absolutely sure off Amazon. To me, if I can get, two years out of these I'll be happy and then if they start leaking just go and buy another pair at around about the same price so yeah so that's the well use these what I was going to say is what I don't do is if I go surf fishing standing in the surf with that surf whacking you I don't use these because they're not going to last long in my opinion I use some other waders heavy duty waders which we'll look at in a moment fly fishing calm water I'm doing a bit of fly fishing I've, I've used these when I'm standing in say just above my knees in in water but it's generally generally pretty calm these these are great great for that but main thing is they're great when you've got to move because they're because they're lightweight your heavy waders which a lot of you will probably recognize these I, I can't i don't know what the material is rubber or something this is what i use surf fishing the reason is if i go surf fishing they're they're, they're brilliant for keeping the water out these are the vast ones can't remember what exact make they are can't remember what they cost or what because i've had these quite a few years they've lasted a good few years and um, they might be over 100 pound now I, I might have got them for under 100 pound but I have had them a year, quite a few years. Very, very heavy, very, very awkward to walk in. So I use them, say you're driving to a car park, beach car park, you've only got a few hundred yards to walk to get to the surf. And when you're surf fishing, you're not, you're just backing up. You're not doing a load of walking, like bass fishing with lures to, to a location. Uh, forget it, they're a nightmare to walk in. But they're brilliant for, as, as far as they're being waterproof. Um, so that's what I use for surf fishing, the, the heavy, heavy duty 
waders, but there's no way I'd go clambering down, try and clamber down to get onto the rocks where wearing these. You'd just be just too unco too uncomfortable, too heavy. Um, wading boots. Again, the the lightweight wading boots, which go with the lightweight uh, waders, chest waders. This make, these are cheap. Same thing I've found. They, none of them last. None of them last uh, a huge amount of time. I don't know. I can't remember what the make these were, but they wouldn't. They're not expensive. But I've I have had them quite a long time. But <laughs> time for a time for a new pair. Believe it or not, I, st I still wear them like that. But this year, of course, they've had it. I've got, I've got to get, uh, got to get, to get a new pair. So I'll try and find them the make, but they weren't expensive. But they've been good. Valère, something Valère, something Valère they're called. But they, they, they've been good for, they've been good for the money. Some of you may have seen me a couple of videos. I've 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 worn this, and this is absolutely fantastic jacket for cold weather, winter. It's the IMAX. It's the flotation jacket, the padded flotation jacket. There you go flotation with all these sort of categories of flo flotation. There. I brought the suit, so I've got the trousers as well in the shed, which I very rarely wear. I, I normally just wear the this on top of the lightweight waders um, in the in the winter on the rocks when it's cold. Can't recommend these enough. But of course, they're not just for shore work. We could be in a flotation jacket, and if you've got the trousers, the, float, the trousers as well, they're quite good for you. Say, if you go out on charter boats fishing. Um, to put put these on because it's got that flotation part and of course it's it's all high vis stuff so it's all safety safety stuff um, but yeah when it's cold when it's cold this will keep you warm in fact at times it just they just get too hot now I don't know if any of you follow a great channel from Guernsey called Troy's Fishing um, really good channel really knowledgeable guy and he's uh, uh, a lot of boat fishing he's licensed so he goes out and does a lot of uh, crab potting and lobster pots but does fishing from the boat as well but also does shore fishing he's talked about talked about these and has got one and you'll see on it see when he's out on the boat when he needs that warmth wearing these because the, the double thing is you go overboard you've got that you've got that safety thing that that float flota flotation thing so if you haven't seen that channel, I'm sure many of you have. Uh, check it out, and you'll see you'll see Troy wearing these as well. But I've I've had I've had this now for a lot of, a lot of lot of years, and it's still absolutely fine. Occasionally, because of the salt, I have to the zip. You know, get some boiling hot water and break up some of the salt on the zip. But z the zips, which is normally what goes first, are still working absolutely fine. Okay, kayak fishing clothing. Now I have done an old video, very old video about the clothing I use, but I'll go through it again for those of you interested because clothing for kayak fishing is very important. Uh, there's nothing worse if you go, you're out there, you get cold and you, you cold and get wet, uh, completely, completely ruin a trip and you just want to come in. Okay, so we're going to work for what, the trousers first. Now, ever since I started kayak fishing, when I did eventually uh, get the right clothing, um, when I decided I am going to keep this up, I went for the bib that comes up to your chest there, and it's a really tight fit around your chest for safety reasons, purpose-built for kayak fishing. It's the palm iron bib. They still do them, but they're a different name now. That was fine, but eventually, of course, a lot, a lot of those things, it wore out. I had a good few years. I think I had to have the feet replaced once. 
the socks, what they call the these, the socks, replaced. Uh, cost me 40 quid because they're not guaranteed. Um, but I had them a few years, but eventually it packed up. It was letting in water at the knees. This was last year. Now, I wanted to go for the same again. Um, but I just could at the time I couldn't afford it. Uh, they're not they're not cheap these things. Kayak clothing sometimes is is not cheap, unfortunately. So what I decided to do as a temporary measure, I never tried them before. I've got these kayak trousers, waterproof trousers. They do come up, they don't come up to your chest, but they do come up to your belly there, and it's quite tight. So they're not they don't sort of like a normal pair of trousers, they don't stop there, they do come up. Um, and these are the NRS dry pants that's the word there you can see you can see that it comes it's got an extension to it so it comes up here and tightens up the dry pants I've used them a few times last year in the autumn they're fine they're fine they're comfortable but eventually I'll go I'll go back to the bib bib with the straps what I found with these is they they tend to slip down a bit but what I'm going to do next time, until I get, I'm going to actually try, I'm going to try some braces, put some braces on to, to to keep them up. But anyway, that's what I'm using now. But the bib is better, in my opinion. On top of that, the cag. I like two piece for kayak fishing not your one-piece dry suit, just personal preference. I find it more comfortable because it's more flexible. In the summer, I can just wear the dry pants or the bib and just a t-shirt on top. Uh, but in the winter, or whether I can go for the, go for the, have the jacket as well. So because, so this, this I've had from day one. Again, it's a palm one. I can't remember what it's called, but it's one of those, it's not your lightweight summer one. It's one of those that will deal with extreme weather. Got the lining and everything come inside. Um, and that, that, and that, that's been great so looks a bit of a mess at the moment it's got stained but it's still waterproof and it's still working fine so that's what I wear on top when I, when I need it I'll just let this helicopter go past your coast your coast one your rescue helicopter these are the boots kayak boots that I use two types I've got the short ones um, again I can't remember the name but I put I put them in the description if you can still get them that is uh, the short ones and the longer ones these are palm these are palm something or other you can still still get these my recommendation would be go for the longer ones the reason is obviously they're going over your dry pants or your dry suit or your bib is gives you a little bit of depth when you're wading in a little bit to get on your kayak you have it very very tight around the uh, this area here and uh, maybe there's less chance of water going over the top and and, and going into the boot Whereas these, of course, they're short, it does. I mean, everything's waterproof, so it's not going to get in. But it's still having that water sitting around. Um, obviously can make you get cold, your feet get colder a bit. So I can't, unfortunately, I can never get these big enough. These are actually size 14, which means I can have lots of layers of socks on. These are 12 was the biggest. Um, and I can't wear them with all those layers of socks. So to be honest, I only wear, use these now in the summer when I've only got one thin layer on. And then I use these, but if you can, if you haven't got such big feet as me, go for these. That's what I would recommend. And then, of course, it is clothing, of course, important clothing, the PFD. A palm one. I don't know how you pronounce that. Kai, Kai Kor Aura or something. They probably still do them. I don't know. Had this from day one. The zips have gone, but the point is, point is it st still works. It's obviously something PFD. You don't, you don't want to go kayak fishing with a um, 
a life jacket because the idea of a life jacket is you don't swim in it you go in you inflate it and it keeps you like this keeps you afloat the idea of kayaking of course this is for you beginners why you've got a PA, pfd it's a flotation device padded keeps you up but you can still move you can still swim the idea being is that you can self-rescue and get back onto the get back onto the kayak so yeah essential the pfd the hat the ugly hat that many of you have seen me wear it's got this comment i can't remember what this type of hat's called i personally i absolutely hate wearing hats because i've got thick hair it's gray now used to be blonde once when i was younger and then slowly it went darker mousy and now i'm more or less all gray I hate wearing them because it makes my head itch, itch, but this is very lightweight. And of course, what I wear this for is sun protection, back of your neck um, and your ears, um, just for, just for sun, sun protection. But very, very lightweight um, hat, which to me, to me is essential. I wouldn't want to go out on a kayak like this. Even with sun cream, you're still, you're going to get burnt. So that's just for, for protection. Now, I haven't got it with me, but someone asked about um, what you wear under your kayak fishing gear. I have covered it in an old video, but I'll go through it again. So we start with the feet. I do use the layering system. Three, so start with the feet. Three layers. A pair of liner socks, thermal liner socks, so they're thin. Then two pairs of thermal socks of a pretty good make. And then what I do, so that's for the extreme. And I also wear heat pads. That you put on uh, put your liner sock on you put a heat pad on when it's very very cold weather that i go out in, in the winter the idea is that i can adjust the layers i wear full layers when it's really cold and then in the summer come down a layer or in the when it's very warm just wear one layer just wear the thin thermal socks likewise under the trousers i wear these i don't know if you can see them these are lightweight walking trousers now with walking trousers they wicker the the moisture so if you're sweating it they dry quickly so you don't want you don't want things that absorb like cotton you don't jeans you don't want things that absorb the moisture because you're going to get cold cold you might be waterproof clothing on but you're still going to get cold so in the summer if it's really hot i wear a pair of shorts under my pants but other than that lightweight walking trousers but in the winter i've got winter walking trousers that are lined lined underneath and they are brilliant really keep really really keep your legs warm um, so lightweight walking trousers so again the layer and then on your top layer of course is your dry pants or your dry suit or your bib same as the top underneath i wear it's not thermal but it's a, a, a like a, t a long sleeve t-shirt but it's one of those in a material that wickers moisture. So that, and then I wear a bit like a sweatshirt on top of that. Again, it's a material that would not absorb water. And then sometimes if it's extreme cold, I've got another uh, sweatshirt type thing that I'll put on top and then my jacket on top. And again, it's all adjustable, adjust it down. Sometimes I'll just have the, the bib, the dry pants and just the long sleeve t-shirt or or if that's too hot just just a t-shirt and then my, my, my pfd so basically a layering system which is adjustable adjust it up or adjust it down depending on the weather the temperature the main thing is staying dry on a kayak and staying warm when I first started kayak fishing, when I was just experimenting with it, all I did was went out with a, um, a wetsuit. And it wasn't in the winter, it was probably, probably early summer or spring. Went out in a wetsuit and just a PFD on top and some shoes, wetsuit shoes, thought this would be fine. It's not. Why? Because you get wet and you get cold and, I, and you get cold very, very quickly. 
Um, so yeah, if you're in a warm water country, fine, you probably get away with a wetsuit, or a lot of them that in these hot countries just go out in, sh in, in shorts, don't they? And I sort of envy them, but to me, wetsuit um, in UK kayak fishing, if you're serious about it and want to go out for a long time, um, to me, it's a no-no. Okay, I think that's it. I think I've covered it all, a lot to cover. You can understand what I'm saying now. If I went on now and, and did about accessories and, and uh, lures, all the different lures I got, it, it'll be a four hour video. But if you've got any questions, something I haven't covered with rods and clothing, the whys or the why nots, uh, just put a, com put a comment in and I'll try my best to, to answer it. Okay, not a bad setting, eh? I wanted to be outside today because it was easier for me to do this with all these rods, rods uh, than doing it in the shed. And you don't want to be indoors, do you, on a, on a daylight? In fact, it is warm because I can just see the camera. You'll probably see it as well. Just see the camera just starting to frost up. But hopefully it hasn't been frosty for too long. But yeah, look at that sea. That would be great, great to be out there today. A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spring day. It's warm, it's calm, the sea's calm. Fantastic. But as you, many of you know, lockdown, no fishing at the moment. So once again, I hope you found that useful and many, many thanks for watching. <laughs>